the importance of screening for prostate cancer in men, and some controversy that has surrounded this very subject today. Our guest on this segment of the show is urologist <coughs> Dr. Thomas Moody from Alabama Urology Associates of Birmingham. Doctor, welcome to Capital Journal. Thank you so much for having us, Don. You're working with the uh, State Department of Public Health in a very concerted effort to get uh, men tested because uh, it's vitally important to get tested and get tested early on. Yes, it is. And uh, we found out in 2006 some great disparities in prostate cancer care in Alabama. <clears throat> Primarily, the death rate from prostate cancer in Alabama is the third highest in the nation, and the death rate among African Americans in Alabama is the, is the highest uh, of any African American population in the nation. And we feel that the reason is for the lack of opportunity for early detection. Prostate cancer is detected early, it's almost always curable. If it's not, then it's not curable. And so we um, have uh, partnered with the public health department, who, who are great people, by the way, just great uh, people, <coughs> to provide free prostate cancer screenings around the state, primarily in the most underserved areas like the Black Belt part of our state. And so to date, since 2007, we've screened almost 5,000 uh, men um, in conjunction with the, with the public health department. One way that uh, you might inspire a lot more men to get on board that might not otherwise is that uh, you hold some higher profile clinics. I know you come to Montgomery and you test the football coaches and that we sort do. of things. And I, I imagine that might inspire a lot of guys who might not ordinarily come in if they see their coaches are getting tested. Right. Well, we um, we started uh, uh, seeing the coaches back in 2007. So this will be our sixth year that we've done it. And uh, each year, um, most of the coaches are younger, and so the incidence of prostate cancer is not that not that high. But we, we find cancer every year. And today, one of the fellows that we found last year gave a little testimonial um, about about getting checked, and it was it was very moving. And he said, "You know, you may not want to do it, but you need to do it." And he said, "I'm living proof. We found cancer in him. We treated him. He's cancer free. He's doing great." And um, uh, it it really it really makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about uh, some misconceptions where the prostate cancer screening is concerned, or the PSA test, as it's right. also referred to. Uh, it used to be that a guy uh, looked forward to, quote unquote, look forward to having the test done when he turned 50. But I believe now the recommendation mm -hmm. is having the test done starting at 40, right? Yes, it is. The American Urological Association changed their guidelines a couple of years ago. And primarily it was because we're seeing men in their 50s and early 60s dying of prostate cancer. And the thought was if those guys were, were diagnosed early, uh, then, then they, their, their death could be avoided. But if you wait till 50, you know, you might, you might, you might miss it. And so, the guideline did, uh, did change. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that may be keeping men from from going and getting this test as soon as they might is uh, there's a certain, I guess, squeamishness element that goes along with it. The invasiveness uh, of the test. Tell us about the test. Well, the test is it, it's really minimally invasive, if you can call it invasive at all. It consists of a blood test or the PSA test and a digital rectal exam, which basically is the, the doctor with a gloved finger feeling of the man's prostate. And why is that important? Well, there are um, certain cancers, anywhere from 5 to 10 percent of cancers, that are not picked up by the PSA, but that can be picked up on, on exam. And the, the exam itself takes probably 10 seconds max, and so it's um, uh, one of the things that we've tried to emphasize uh, is that men aren't going to get any sympathy from women as far as getting tested. I mean, if, if a woman says, okay, you go have a mammogram and a pap smear, then come complain to me. Right. Uh, and so uh, the, the women are programmed from an early age to get tested and get checked, they don't like it. It's not comfortable. It's you know it's humiliating or whatever, but they do it. Or mo more women do it than men get checked. And what we're trying to do is to change the men's psyche, if you will, so that they are become more responsible uh, for their for their own care. And we try to um, uh, talk about you know if you do that, do it for your family, do it for your loved ones, because uh, you certainly can't take care of your family if you don't take care of yourself. Are attitudes being changed, do you think? I think so. <clears throat> Particularly, we've noticed that in the, um, I referenced the black belt, uh, we, we've been there 
And when we go back, we get a lot of repeat guys coming in, which is which is good. And after they get checked, they said, oh, you mean that was it? I said, that's it. He said, and nothing to that. There's nothing to that. So then they'll go and talk to their friends and try to get their friends uh, uh, to come in. So uh, we, we, try, we say we're trying to change attitudes one man at a time. And if one man changes his attitude and he tells his friend and brings his friend in, then it kind of is like a, a viral effect that, mm-hmm. that, that, the, that the word gets out that this, is, this isn't so bad. And particularly, and we've had a number of guys in the black belt that had we found cancer in, and they are absolutely supporters now, supporters of our, of our work and of, and of getting the word out. So that's been, that's been very gratifying. In general, too, I suppose the machismo factor uh, gets in the way here. Guys like to maintain the tough image, and they think, you know, I don't need to go to the doctor, that sort of thing. Uh, you, right, and and that is that, that has been something uh, to, uh, to to overcome. Uh, but again, you know, you just got to try to change it. Uh, We're we, all human, we, right? We, yeah, what we are, and and I think some of the machismo is really fear. Uh, disguised as as toughness, right? And and, uh, and and we understand that, and so we try to help help people work through that. So, starting at age forty, you recommend um, mm-hmm. this test, and is it like uh, the mammogram, for instance? Do you recommend it every year or every other year? <clears throat> well, uh, for the most part, the general recommendation is every year, but there being some new guidelines developed that. Um, if they become widespread, you might not need to do it one uh, every year. For instance, at age 40, if a man's PSA is below 0.7, let's say, then the odds of him having a problem are much less, and so he might be able to put off repeat tests, you know, two, three, or four, or five years. And so, uh, as more data becomes available, I think we might be able to tailor the uh, screening a little bit better to. Um, to the man, for, for instance, an analogy would be colonoscopy uh, for ch- testing for um, uh, colon cancer. You know, I think they recommend getting tested at age 50 unless your family has had a family history at age 40. And then depending on what your colonoscopy and family history are, are they tell you when your next colonoscopy should be. And I think we're working toward that with PSA and uh, prostate cancer that we may be able to tailor the, the test a little more. But for the time being, the recommendation is once a year. The analogy that you drew earlier to mammograms and women not having any sympathy on men because they go through a similar process right. with mammograms. I've often heard prostate cancer referred to as men's breast cancer because it is, it is that. It needs right. to be just taken just as seriously as women do the threat of breast cancer. Exactly. And it's interesting, the statistics for prostate cancer and breast cancer are almost identical in terms of the number of, of people it affects, the number of people it kills. The different breast cancer tends to be uh, affect a little bit younger population, which may be one of the reasons that um, that it's gotten a little more, uh, not a, little, a tremendously uh, uh, greater attention. And because one of the things we that uh, people think is prostate cancer is an old man's disease. Well, it certainly is an old man's disease. If you live long enough, you'll probably get it. That's but more people die with it than from it. But it's also a young man's disease. Um, we've had people in their 30s that die of prostate cancer, and certainly um, in their 40s. And I recently visited one of my patients at his at his house. He's 65, which is I'm 65 now, and that doesn't seem so old anymore. Yeah. And he's dying of prostate cancer. He's on hospice, and he did everything right uh, in his life uh, in terms of he was great physical shape, not overweight, didn't smoke, exercised, did everything, except he didn't get checked in time. And so you see a, a vital individual like that, that, that that's, that's dying, and he knows he's dying from it, um, and it could have been prevented, and that, that's the kind of thing that just breaks your heart. Indeed. Now, talk about getting checked in time. That's where all of these uh, free screenings that you do now come into play. You're working very closely with uh, the State Department of Public Health and doing free screenings around the state. Yes, we do. Uh, and the, um, we've, we've, we're very, very fortunate uh, to have that relationship with the Public Health uh, Department. It's, it's been a great partnership. But I also need to add something about uh, my group, Urology Centers of Alabama. I'm fortunate to work with a large group of, of very um, good-hearted doctors. 
If we find a problem with any of these free screenings, any kind, we'll take care of the person regardless of their ability to pay. At Urology Centers of Alabama, we have a huge prostate cancer practice, the, by far the biggest in the southeast. We have tr tremendous uh, uh, we have, uh, practice in that. And we feel like that the privilege of having that kind of practice brings with it some responsibility, and that is to try to um, bring the level of care that we can provide to our patients in our office to the people who may not be able to uh, uh, to get it. Now, if we screen somebody and find a problem, they go whoever they want to go to, but we're sort of the safety net uh, that uh, we provide uh, the care if, if, if people can't get it elsewhere. Is there some place people can go to find out where, where mm -hmm. and when these clinics are being held? Right. Uh, the, the easiest place on the web is urologyhealthfoundation.org, urologyhealthfoundation.org or they can call uh, Urology Centers of Alabama, 205-930-0920, and uh, we, could, we could get them uh, the, the list. We generally go to about 14 or 16 counties a year. Uh, the next one I think we got coming up is in Monroe County, and then we'll be at the several of the, of the Black Belt um, uh, counties uh, the rest of the year. For people who come and take the test, how much of their time does it take? Well, the te you know, we, we, we use the term 10 minutes. We say it only takes 10 minutes, and it's 10 minutes that could save your life. The actual testing part probably takes three minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's absolutely free. There's no, uh, no financial questions whatsoever. All we want to know is a name and an address so we can get in touch with you uh, to let you know your results, and then uh, we take it from there. I mentioned that uh, you, you test the football coaches every year. Alabama, mm -hmm. Auburn, a lot of the, the schools take part. Do they, do they realize the importance of what they're doing, not only for their own health, but for uh, raising public <coughs> perception of the issue? Well, I think, I think so. That's one of the things when we first started doing this, we, we talked to them and, 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 and reminded them that, that they uh, enjoy a, a very privileged place in their communities. The, the high school football coach and the ministers are probably the in some of the small towns are probably the you know the the guys they're they're the ones and so we ask them to take our message back to their parts of the state and I and I and I know some of them have um, and particularly the ones that have been uh, affected by it I, I think I referenced one of the guys that we di that we diagnosed and he's he's now uh, on the stump so to speak to uh, to, to to get the word out. Indeed. That you can't buy that kind of advertising, can you? No, you can't. Yeah. No, you can't. Uh, t speaking of public perception, uh, you sort of uh, are waging a battle against another public perception type issue mm -hmm. where this, uh, where PSA testing is concerned, and that is misinformation. Yes. There have been some studies mm -hmm. conducted, uh, some results I think were recently <coughs> released that sort of contradicted uh, the importance of the PSA test. Uh, right. Tell us wh where you stand on that and what they came up with. Okay. Well, this is the... Uh, preventive, the, the United States Preventive Services Task Force, which is a group of physicians who review situations like mam mammography, PSA testing, all that stuff, and come up with recommendations. And they recently came up and recommended that there be no more PSA testing. Wipe it out. No more. Because they said they weren't sure if it helped and it may cause more harm than good by the, some of the treatments and testing. Well, it was, it was based on two studies that they used, both of which were severely flawed studies that the, just briefly, one of them was the, the length of time for follow-up was five years, which in prostate cancer is not near long enough. You've got to be at least 15 years. Um, and, and also, in that particular study, the people that were in the control group, the people who weren't supposed to be tested, about half of them already had normal PSAs and they, and they knew it, so they knew the control group was already normal. And so there was just a lot of flaws like that. And then they, and there was another European study that, that had flaws as well. And they used some statistical um, uh, methods that are, that, are, that are somewhat questionable. In the recent meeting of the American Urological Association, one of the members of this task force was at the meeting and he was called a task. And, and the European study is now more mature and showed a 44% decrease in death rate with prostate cancer. And his, his comment was, I understand what, you, what you're saying. I see what you've got there. We're not going to change. Wow. 
And <clears throat> the, the disturbing, there's several disturbing things. One, this task force is headed by a pediatrician. Not one person on that task force treats cancer of any kind. So There's no urologist, no, no oncologist. No urologist, no oncologist, no anybody like that. For people like me that have been around a long time, um, when I started in 1978, 70 80% of new di newly diagnosed prostate cancers were incurable, already gone, couldn't help them. Now that's probably about 5%. So 95% of people we see now are curable. Maybe they don't all need to be cured, uh, so we probably need better tests to know which cancers are, are lethal and which aren't. But clearly, I think I think the decision to get tested or treated should be up to the doctor and his patient, not to a government panel. I'm also very, without getting too political, very scared that in in the future these types of panels are going to have more and more power, and the and they the government and anybody people can can use it and say well. They say don't do it, so we're not going to cover it anymore. And I don't want to go back to the to the time of 1978 where I had somebody dying from prostate cancer all the time. It's just it's just it's just not right. And I don't know what the agenda, if there is one, but 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 certainly uh, I think most of us feel very strongly that we need to try to maintain some autonomy uh, and protect the doctor-patient relationship because it's policies like like this uh, panels that uh, that destroy it. Mm -hmm. As we wrap up, Doctor, uh, early detection is key in the battle against uh, prostate cancer and uh, testing is crucial to that, so you're offering free clinics uh, around the state in conjunction with the Alabama Department of Public Health. Th the web address that you gave us again for people to find out where uh -huh. the clinics are in their area? UrologyHealthFoundation.org Urology Health Foundation is the nonprofit arm of, of, of our group, and that's where we have done most of our philanthropic um, uh, work. And again, uh, I can't say enough good things about the Department of Public Health. They've been wonderful. And also not enough good things about my, my partners at Urology Centers of Alabama, because it's, it's really unusual for a private practice group of doctors to be, to be willing to put in time, effort, and fun to a great degree these uh, screenings and so I'm, I'm grateful for, for, for both of those. We'll stress again the clinics are free uh, they'll need about what 10 or 15 minutes of 10 your time? 10 or 15 minutes and, and usually we have a free t-shirt too. Well even better. There you go. <laughs> and it could save your life literally. Yes it could. Thank you so much for what you're doing and uh, thank you for the education today. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Well thank you so much for, for having me. Really enjoyed it. Dr. Thomas Moody is a urologist with the uh, Urology Centers of Alabama. Thanks for being on our program. Thanks, Don. And Capital Journal will be right back. <laughs>